Pundit. Yay. Oh, it's okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's get into it. What a week. <laughs> On Thursday, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer officially announced that he will be retiring at the end of the court's current term. Breyer explained, I figured I'd stop working after Roe does. I'm very sorry. What a way to bring... <laughs> In hindsight, we knew that would bring everybody down. <laughs> During Breyer's announcement event, President Biden promised to stand by his pledge to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court. The announcement, of course, inspired speculation about which black woman could potentially fill Breyer's shoes. Personally, I'm hoping for Kamala Harris because while I like the Constitution, I love the drama. <laughs> to anyone from the K-Hive listening, I don't know what you want me to be for in this specific instance but I am for that. <laughs> of course, conservatives are already working themselves into a frenzy over Biden's pick, who again, he has not named, tweeted Missouri Senator Josh Hawley, if he chooses to nominate a left-wing activist who will bless his campaign against parents, his abuse of the FBI, his refusal to enforce our immigration laws, and his lawless vaccine mandates expect a major battle in the Senate. If you're not familiar with Biden's campaign against parents, do your own research. I, for one, find it pretty troubling that both of Biden's parents just so happen to be dead. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Supreme Court agreed on Monday to hear cases challenging affirmative action at Harvard and UNC, potentially endangering programs designed to foster a racially diverse student body. We don't know where this will go, but Justice Roberts recently tweeted, bring back the old gossip girl, so it's not a great sign. <laughs> at a Washington, D.C. rally, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. gave an unhinged rant comparing vaccine mandates unfavorably to Nazi Germany. You can hide in an attic like Anne Frank did. I visited in 1962 East Germany with my father and met people who had climbed the wall and escaped. So it was possible. Many died truly, but it was possible. Did he not understand why Anne Frank's diary had an ambiguous ending? Did he think it was like an inception situation where you draw your own conclusions? Afterwards, RFK Jr.'s wife, Curb Your Enthusiasm star Cheryl Hines, took to Twitter to distance herself from her husband's comments while at the same time informing everyone that they are married. I'm sure people knew I was not one of them. That was new. Love is fascinating. Can't change her conception. You can know she's married to RFK Jr., but still in your heart, she is married to Larry David. You know, it's not changeable. Said Cheryl Hines, my husband's opinions are not a reflection of my own. While we love each other, we differ on many current issues. And then she went further saying, the atrocities that millions endured during the Holocaust should never be compared to anyone or anything except how he fucks. No, she didn't. <laughs> that was a tough one too. Some toughies in here. <laughs> Some hard ones to get through. I do regret that. It's a terrible thing to say. Anyway, after Cheryl decided to roast her dumb husband on Twitter, like she's a politician who needs to put out a public statement, everyone told her to divorce him, which was very annoying. And then RFK Jr. apologized for his comments. So why put out a statement of your own first? These are such bad decisions. But when your emergency contact is the worst Kennedy, maybe you don't have the best judgment. He apologized for his Holocaust comments. His opinions are monstrous. He is a terrible person. Like, his metaphors don't, like, oh, the metaphor was unacceptable. The metaphor, you're killing people. Sarah Palin's COVID diagnosis will delay the start of her defamation trial against the Times. The judge announced it, said she is, of course, unvaccinated. What a stupid son of a bitch. Just that's... We're going to start using that Biden clip like a morning zoo radio show. We're going to also try to maybe, we're considering having that and a boing. It's the Biden button. Brian, hit that Biden button. What a stupid song. That's the least hot mic, hot mic moment of all time. He is at a podium <laughs> looking at the audience. <laughs> what kind of hot mic is that? What is? What are we talking about? <laughs> In an open letter, Neil Young demanded Spotify remove his music over false information about vaccines disseminated on the platform. Writes the singer, you can have Rogan or Young, not both. But you can also have Young Rogan, the all-new coming-of-age sitcom, coming this fall to CBS. For the record, I am not discussing the show and just like that again. Uh, we've done it too many. <laughs> we've done it too many times in a row. But <laughs> because we did talk about it, Jossie Kaufman, one of our writers, started watching Sex and the City from the very beginning. And while, unfortunately, we're unable to have a conversation about it, Jossie is here right now. Jossie, please join us for one moment. 
Jossie is here for one reason and one reason only. Hi, Jossie. Hello. Uh, I understand you've perfected a certain impression of of, of Miranda's uh, uh, schlubby husband, oh, a yeah. man named Steve. Yeah, so I'm part of the Steve Hive, and I, <laughs> I did bring a prop for the podcast. Those are glasses. <laughs> She's putting on glasses. She is uh, becoming Steve. Okay, becoming Steve, becoming Steve. Miranda! <laughs> Miranda, I'm doing it. I'm starting the ball. <laughs> yes. Jossie Kaufman, everybody. Thank you, everyone. That was Steve. incredible. I drove from the east side to do that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love that impression. That's awesome. <laughs> Poor Steve. Daniel Craig did a variety actors on actors interview with Javier Bardem, unaware his forehead was bleeding. The results of a collision with his ring light. Christ. I didn't even look at that. So they've, they've sent me this, this wonderful ring flash, yeah. which I've set up with an iPad in the middle of it. And I went like this, like that, and it just fell on my head just before. <laughs> A couple points about this. <laughs> All right, first the joke. The name's Bean, Mr. Bean. All right, now that that's out of the way. <laughs> uh, two points about this. One, the way uh, actors talk to each other is disgusting, and they have a tone with each other that is vulgar and horrible and obscene and shouldn't be allowed. Second... Did you catch that when he said he doesn't look on look at himself in the mirror? She in the <laughs> pundit has <laughs> stolen a sandwich. <laughs> She's so good at the top. Come on. All right. It's fine. The point is, did you catch the part where Daniel Craig said he didn't look in the mirror before sitting down for an interview? That is so handsome. Like, doesn't look in the mirror. Didn't check himself before sitting down for the fucking interview. He was bleeding from the head. I thought that was cool. <laughs> I don't have a joke. I just thought it was cool. Peter Dinklage has a problem with Disney's new live action remake of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, specifically the part about dwarves. You're progressive in one way, and then, but you're still making that fucking backward oh, story of about seven dwarves <laughs> living in a cave. To get, what the f are you doing, man? In response, Disney said the film has a different approach and they have been consulting with members of the dwarfism community <laughs> to avoid reinforcing stereotypes from the original animated film. I really, Dinklage rules. And this is like a broader issue with these some of these remakes. Like they update to a diverse cast or they add like one tweak, like Cinderella has a small business. Then the politics are still despicable, you know? It's still about like finding true love and becoming a princess. And it's like, sack the castle. <laughs> Kill the royals. Oh, you have a small business. She sings a song in Cinderella. I've literally done this before. I don't care. She sings a song in, the, in Cinderella about wanting to be a million to one. If the goal of your world is to have 999,999 incredibly sad people. Not a good song. According to a report from Vice, the recent first ever genetically modified pig to human heart transplant was made possible by a solution that contained a small amount of cocaine. The head surgeon explained, and I have an idea for a restaurant that's themed like a hospital, and what about Uber, but for a zoo? Because <laughs> he has his best ideas on cocaine. Some of them are good. What is an Uber for a zoo? You're not against it. Censors have given Chinese audiences a different ending to the film Fight Club, which just arrived on the country's largest streamer, Tencent Video, concluding with an end card that reads, the police rapidly figured out the whole plan and arrested all criminals, successfully preventing the bomb from exploding. After the trial, Tyler was sent to lunatic asylum, receiving psychological treatment. He was discharged from the hospital in 2012. And his, the, the crawl went on. And his dying words were, the Uyghurs are fine, enjoy the Olympics. <laughs> It's a, night of, it's a night of tough ones. <laughs> Thankfully, authorities located all the missing lab monkeys that escaped from a truck crash in Pennsylvania, but Jordan Peterson somehow still made it on time to his Rogan appearance. <laughs> and finally, Washington State issued an emergency order as they attempt to fight back an infestation of European green crabs. When asked where the crabs came from, Washington State got weirdly defensive and said, I don't know, probably a toilet seat. <laughs> Applaud that. <laughs> And now for a segment we call Hot Takes. That name will change because Crooked Now is a climate pol podcast called Hot Take. So it's really confusing. Um, <laughs> so, so it's funny because I could claim that this occurred to us in the moment, but it's on the card, which means we knew we had to change the name and none of us did it. <laughs> Here's how the artist formerly known as Hot Takes works. 
<laughs> each of us will have one minute to defend a take we've never seen before. We'll all go twice and we each get one skip. But be aware, if you skip, you're stuck with what you get. You have one minute to since try your best to do your best actual defense of whatever pops up on screen. Are you ready, Lindsay? Oh, yeah. Are you ready, River? I'm ready. Are you ready, Brenda? I'm ready, yes. All right. Let's see our first hot take. Elden Ring on PS5 comes out in February, but I'm way, way, way more excited about Kirby and the Forgotten Land coming to Switch in March by me. Okay. <laughs> That's my take, okay? that Obviously, famously, that is my take. I am much more excited for anything involving a uh, pink blow-up kind of marshmallow bird that uh, is the cheapest, cheesiest, easiest character to play in Smash Brothers. I think it's cool that Smash Brothers is a game that makes absolutely no sense. The buttons do different things when you hit them. <laughs> but if you want to win, you can just press the win button by choosing the marshmallow named Kirby because that marshmallow floats in a game that is 100% about gravity <laughs> and has the ability to suck in other players and kill them which is, I think, an advantage. And so my assumption is that Kirby is a character that exists uh, for people that are pretty stressed and like life, you know, your pandemic, uh, the news, all those things get you down. So why play an exciting, riveting, artistic game like Elden Ring from some of the best creative minds in the history of video games that literally changed the form when you can be a pink marshmallow running around? <laughs> That's it. Hot take. It was a hot take. That was a hot, a hot take. take. I feel embarrassed. I was lost. I actually... <laughs> I stand by that. I agree with you. I like that mine is like a very esoteric distinction between video games. And the next one's going to be something like uh, gay rights are bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> adults with a sweet tooth are underdeveloped people. <laughs> Lindsay, you have one minute. You know, I know that this is something of great interest to you. So that's your view. Let's hear it. OK. Adults with a sweet tooth are underdeveloped people. The thing is, is uh, sweets are for children. I think that's clear. <laughs> They're for babies. Are you going to suck on a lollipop as a grown adult? You look like an idiot. You're clearly not well in the head. If you like sweets over savory, as you get to be an adult, you like things that are salty because you get old and your tongue gets old and it gets done with happiness. It's it's over the happiness. From now on, it says no more good stuff, only bad stuff. Give me gross, gross shit and no more sweet stuff. Otherwise, if you, and if you like it, you're dumb. You're a dumbo. There's nothing good to say. You're just stupid. You look uh, dumb and you're dumb and you're dumb and I'm dumb. <laughs> Incredible! What a great, what a what a what a hot take! What a, I, what a strange I, opinion! I really want like a Gadsden flag style shirt that says, "I only want dumb shit. Don't <laughs> give me the sweet stuff or whatever it was. <laughs> like I only want stuff that tastes like shit. <laughs> Don't give me anything sweet." Straight people are more interesting. Okay, I'm going to say something to you. Straight people are way more interesting than queer people. And I stand by this. Queer people obsessed with talking about their identities. Boring. Queer people obsessed with justice. Boring. Queer people obsessed with going on trips to Palm Springs and Ojai with groups of friends and getting into business with each other. Boring. Straight people love Vegas. Straight people go on road trips to the Grand Canyon and even swing by that big Hoover Dam thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Straight people often much hotter than gay people. Um, wow. Straight women, um, beautiful at their makeup skills. Way better than stupid ass drag queens. Drag queens, you look like clowns. <laughs> Straight men who wear makeup called warrior mud, so cool. <laughs> Gay men who wear warrior mud, you're trying too hard. Wow. Awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> Giving us a lot to think about. <laughs> Next up, Ohio is easily our worst state. Oh, River. my God. Take it away. Wow. Well, Ohio is easily our worst state, uh, mainly because it borders Pennsylvania and Indiana. Um, have you ever had a shit sandwich? That's Ohio. <laughs> its its biggest cities are Cleveland, yikes, Columbus, what the shit. That guy found something that people were already on. And Cincinnati, Cincinnati's biggest claim to fame is spaghetti with chili on it. <laughs> Literally say Cincinnati to any person from Cincinnati and that is what they bring up. Wet spaghetti in a bowl with chili on it. <laughs> that is an abomination. Ohio is easily our worst state. 
It's lake caught on fire. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It was the river, which is a cleaner thing. <laughs> it caught on a body of water. We were all upset about the ocean being on fire, but Ohio did it first. <laughs> Way to go. I think that chili spaghetti sounds pretty good. I'm just going to admit it. <laughs> Pool owners are morally virtuous. <laughs> Skip. <laughs> sure, ban mouse. Oh my god. Ban mouse. Wow. Oh my god. That is up. Sorry, I'm a bit overwhelmed because I've of course always believed that we should ban the graphic comic. <laughs> <laughs> that tells the story of a small mouse experiencing the Shoah where the Nazis are cats. I think when a school in Tennessee says, no, no, can't teach this to our children, there's a bad word in it. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think kids should be given a completely anodyne presentation of history, uh, society, culture, for as long as humanly possible. So every strange or weird or different feeling they have all the way through childhood is something they know correctly to feel guilty and shameful about. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Next up, who's next? Oh no. Devin Sawa was our least hot, least interesting 90s teen heartthrob, famously Casper. <laughs> Okay, well, obviously a ghost is disgusting. Uh, and white men are bad. So I don't know if you have to cut that, but look at that bowl cut on that loser. Uh, he is wearing a pea yellow shirt. What is he so happy about? His life as a rich boy? He's disgusting, obviously hideous. His lips are not precious. <laughs> Nobody wants to look into his eyes for days. Nobody's like, hey, why don't you and Eminem do a video together? Two hot trash bags. <laughs> Nobody wants that. He's a bad heartthrob because look at that disgusting face you don't want to make out with. You don't even think about kissing it. You don't even take a pillow and pretend his face is that pillow and kiss it. That's how ugly he is. Wow. Nice. What's up next? Mike Pence should hang a medal for best governor on his chest. Brendan. Um, I'm going to pass. Yeah. Uh-oh. I don't know what they are when you pass. I don't want to talk about him. My Emmy nom should have been a win. <laughs> My Emmy nom should have been a win. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. First off, yes, it wasn't a real Emmy nomination. It was for the short form category, which is a much smaller category, which my representatives at UTA and Mosaic Media Company said made it more likely that I would win. However, I lost to JB Smoove. <laughs> Uh, for a show that was on Quibi that nobody saw, was never even released on Quibi, was released on Roku after the nominations came out. Nobody even watched it. Nobody probably even watched my show who were voters either. However, a lot of people in Eastern Europe watched my show, and I know that because they follow me on Instagram and they send me photos of their feet. How many feet pics is J.B. Smoove getting? Everybody voted for J.B. Smoove because they love him on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And everybody loves Curb because all Emmy voters are old white men. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Wow. I love, I like the veering off to take a quick hit at Mosaic and UTA. Uh, I like that a lot. It was great. Just as if there's any casting directors listening, those are, that's where I'm wrapped. <laughs> it's also, it's also a contact. It's a, it's a, it's a small ding, but a bigger kind of contact, yeah. you know? It's a status symbol. It's a status symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up next? What do we have to do next? Baseball is stupid and boring. Yeah. River, take it away. Uh, baseball is stupid and boring. <laughs> you pay money to go sit outside. <laughs> you enter a building, you buy a ticket online, 
And then you take that ticket and you stand in line to enter a building that is then somehow outside. <laughs> Once you enter the building, you're still outdoors. <laughs> Whenever you want to eat, they throw the food at you, <laughs> which, no thanks. <laughs> Hand me my nuts, please. <laughs> It's only played. <laughs> it's a I minute's mean, a long time. <laughs> I know it is, yes. Just trying to figure out what base to go to. It's only played by people who wear long pants with belts. <laughs> it's so slow and boring. You can wear accessories. <laughs> it's not going to hurt you because nothing's happening. They wear hats to shield their eyes from the sun, but they play at night. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes baseball. Nobody likes baseball. Oh and that God. is a very, very scorching edition of Hot Takes. Thank you to Brendan. Thank you, River. Thank you, Lindsay. Sure.